dealing with the FDR and clan battles. So in the upcoming season, you have the opportunity to bring two battleships or one CV and one battleship. Um, while you could forgo bringing them if you wanted to, there's a really high likelihood that you will. So how are you gonna be able to deal with this? Well, first off, you have to recognize what is the FDR. The FDR is a high health battering ram that is going to draw uh, map attention. It's gonna basically be the screaming child with running around with a baseball bat, breaking all your lamps and cool shit that you have to chase after and deal with. Because if you don't deal with it, then it's gonna deal with you. Um, usually an FDR that's let loose and ignored is gonna deal an extreme amount of punishment. So in this case, with two battleships, you're gonna have to work primarily on AA positioning. If you go with uh, having a battleship on one side, usually the contested flank, one battleship on the off side, the safe flank, um, there is the possibility of a safe to safe push. But in order to do this, you're gonna have to have enough resources that you are kicking out 12 to 16 puffs of flak in order to uh, try to bully down the FDR. Now the FDR, some players are gonna be able to dodge flak, but in general the FDR is slow enough that it will interact with flak whether it wants to or not. So you actually need to make sure that you're bringing enough to do that. So if you've got two battleships and you have them split, that gives you five additional um, ships that you can play with. You're probably going to need a destroyer, something in terms of uh, being able to contest a contested cap, unless you literally just charge in with very large ships and do it that way, which is possible, but perhaps we'll consider that an advanced strategy for right now. So you have the options of, uh, for DDs, you've got the options of a Holland, uh, which obviously has amounts of stupid amounts of AA. You also have the options of a gearing, which is not gonna have nearly the same amount of flak, but does have defensive fire. The defensive fire is going to mean that when the flak hits, if it happens to be from the defensive fire ship, it will deal a severe amount of damage. Also, your battleship choice can reflect something that has a decent anti-air kit as well. You could pick a Vermont, you could pick a, well, I don't know if you'd pick Kremlin because that's all gonna get blown off, but uh, Ohio has a decent AA suite. Uh, Montana has one, Thunderer has defensive fire, although it doesn't have very much flak. And again, the area to hit is 12 to 16 flak puffs in the area that you're trying to protect. If you happen to have a destroyer on either side, that destroyer can add its AA when the FDR comes back to flex. So if the FDR is gonna come over and hover in this cap, the destroyer is going to have to back up to where the battleship is, maybe the cruiser or other things. Realistically, with the seven ships, you're going to have either a 3-3, three, three, well, a 3-4 split for being on the contested side, or you might have some independent group in the middle with two ships while well, you have uh, three and then two. Again, against an FDR, you're going to want 16 to 12 puffs of flak, however the hell you get it. It could be through use of an Austin, which generates 10 puffs of flak. It could be through use of... Uh, two anti-air cruisers um, or you're going to need to have some kind of fighter that's going to come in and bully down uh, FDR planes if they want to stay. For instance, the Venezia has a fighter. The Hindenburg might. I think you could take that as an option on a spotter plane. Um, in terms of AA, what you're aiming to do is to get three plane kills, preferably up to six plane kills, uh, Per attack from the FDR. FDR is going to get through. It has a lot of health. It's going to bully your position. It's going to make you move. What you need to do is make sure that when it does, it takes significant losses uh, while doing so, because it's going to come out with 14 planes. If you're able to make it lose somewhere between three to six planes, it's only really going to be able to attack twice before it just can't attack again. And while the FDR seems like it has, you know, a lot of planes, it starts with 21. If you're losing five per strike, three strikes, you've lost 15. So you do that with bombs, then you do it with torps, and then you kind of don't really have planes anymore. You've regen some, maybe you get one more strike out of each, and then you're basically out. So if you do not have fighters from a CV, you're going to have to brute force it with AA, which is completely and totally possible, but you're gonna have to aim for this amount of flak, yielding this amount of plane kills per strike, you probably want to call out amongst your clan or amongst your team, 
you know, I killed three torpedo planes, I killed this, or call out how many kills there are so that somebody can kind of keep track of it. Again, an FDR starts with 21 planes. Whatever, 21 planes here, I am using my fingers. Um, if they have the flight tech mod, it can go up to 23 of each type. Um, they regen one roughly one and a half, every one and a half to two minutes. So you can have a rough idea as to what its uh, capabilities are. Moving over into the 1CV1 battleship. This is going to be up to the team as to whether they're going to put their battleship on the contested or they're going to send their battleship on a safe to safe push. Most likely it's going to be on the contested or it's going to be in some kind of situation where it's going to be able to exert influence over the high influence cap because you have to win the contested cap. You get your safe cap for free. Um, if you're against an FDR, you're going to need your CV to have fighters that can deal with the FDR. While I personally enjoy a full fighter build, if your particular group comp needs spotting, you would not take Interceptor. Um, but that means that if you drop fighters on an FDR that's moving along, your CV may come in and drop fighters in front of it, and the FDR may drop fighters at the exact same time. And while the FDR is continuing to move, those fighters may end up shooting each other instead of actually chasing the player's planes. That can be an issue. Uh, Interceptor will stop that interaction, but um, it does deny you surface spotting. So if you're going to have an Interceptor, you're going to make you're going to need to make sure that the six uh, surface ships that you have, you have some kind of spotting, either from a destroyer, some kind of safe cruiser that's able to provide this. Probably destroyers in general, especially if you're facing an FDR. FDR is not able to kill destroyers. It's able to hover them, so the destroyer can't be off completely on its own so that the FDR just spins over it goes, hey, everybody, shoot this, and then the enemy team all shoots that. So you will still have to play as a team. Again, the prior things are going to apply. You're going to want 12 to 16. We'll go green with this one. Well, you want to want 12 to 16 puffs of flak. Obviously, if you go more, that's even better. What this does is it's going to start to create a walling effect, which makes it very hard for the FDR to actually get around all the flak which means you're forcing losses so that you can try to force three to six plane kills uh, per attack. This is very important, but you also have the additional ability of your friendly CV to try to drop fighters to intercept the FDR. So if the FDR is trying to make an influence play, you can drop a fighter in the way. The FDR has to make a choice. Do I lose planes to the fighter or do I recall? If he recalls, he's gonna start all the way back over again and start to head somewhere else. If your CV comes in and drops fighters again, up, oh, it's gonna recall, it's gonna to have to start all the way back over again and try to go somewhere else. If you have your CV screen aggressively in this way, your surface ships need to win because your CV is not fighting the surface ships, it's fighting the enemy carrier. And if it's not getting kills and the enemy carrier's not getting kills, if nobody's doing damage, your surface ships have to win out on that. Which also means that if your surface ships are not winning, your carrier's gonna to have to divert the FDR is going to start running around slamming things. So this is extremely important that you have factored in some kind of aerial coverage. You don't necessarily have to play on top of each other. You don't have to be all snug in one little spot on the map. But you need to be in a situation where if your destroyer is out front, you've got two cruisers, your destroyer can back up to assist the cruisers, preferably if it's a Holland, a Gearing, something that has some form of noteworthy AA to be able to assist or chip in, just to make sure that the cruisers are able to deal with the threat. Once the threat is done, they can flex back out, start to push or be aggressive or do whatever the hell they're gonna do. Um, in general, when dealing with a carrier, uh, you can, make, you can take risks, and you're going to have to once you start losing ships and stuff starts getting crazy, to where you isolate ships to go off to do a thing or to catch an angle or to whatever. But the name of the game is, what do you want to do? What is important to you and your team at the time? And how are you going to make sure to force the fact that you're going to take it? Because if you're going to send... Uh, if you're going to send one little asset here, one little asset here, one little asset here, they're going to get isolated and they're going to get harassed by the CV. Do you need these three positions to be able to take this? Or can you consolidate? Perhaps something like you send an asset here, you send an asset here, you send an asset back. 
So this can flex forward, add AA, flex back. This can flex forward, add pressure, flex back. It can do whatever it needs to do. That's just something you're gonna have to look at the map and figure out how you are intending to do it with your team. That's not a thing I can answer for you. But I hope this helps for what it's worth.